Hey guys, Dave here. Welcome to Computer Hobbyists. Today I want to talk about Mono Game Mastery, the book. It's about building a multi-platform 2D game and a reusable game engine. Let's go over the chapters first and then I'll get to the good part where we will try out the game that you make with this book and I'll explain the code for it. So the first chapter is an introduction to Mono Game and what type of games it's good for. It's good for 2D games, uh, like for example, side shoot, side scrolling shooters, vertical shooters, platform games, and all that. You can use. There's no 3D stuff in this book, but Mono Game does have a 3D capability. But a lot of people prefer to use some of the 3D engines on the market for that. Mono Game is not an engine. It's a framework that's used with .NET to build game engines. All right. So the second chapter is very important if you're not not familiar with .NET, uh, configuring your dev environment shows you how to install Visual Studio and so forth. And then the third chapter goes over mono game architecture, which is extremely important. And then the fourth chapter is planning your game engine. And the fifth is your asset pipeline, which will be explained in detail in the book. The asset pipeline will make your life a lot easier, but I'll let the book explain it to you. And I'll go over uh, creating input classes, uh, audio classes and you're creating your own particle generator collision detection animations and text and finally level design so let, let's play the game and then we'll take a look at the code so a vertical shooter these choppers here are actually two sprites one's a sprite is the rotor and the other is the chopper body Missile and the explosions you see are, are all done with uh, the particle generator. And the turrets that just killed me, those are two sprites. First thing is the content section. That's the content.mgcb. That's your uh, pipeline. I'll let the book explain that to you, but it's very important. Let's get into the engine itself. So the in engine, it's got your base classes for input. We'll go into those later. That's where you listen in for key clicks or mouse clicks or so forth and handle it. And then base game object, this is your most important object in the game. All your sprites you build and so forth will inherit the base game object. Gives it uh, basic things like it stores your texture, uh, your position, your angle, and your direction, and so forth. And here's your collision detection algorithms. There's three of them here, including a bounding box one in the book. It goes over the different types of uh, collision detections and stuff. And here's your basic animation and animation frame uh, classes. Here's particles. Oops. You got an emitter. And you got a regular particle class. And particles are random, so you have a random number generator. And here's your sound stuff. Truth be told, on my own engines I've made after reading this book i decided not to implement the the way he did sound i found that just using the regular way that the mono game framework does sound was good enough for me but you may like the way he did it here and decide to implement the sound the way, exactly the way he did it's up to you whatever you prefer and here's something that's extremely important these are your base game states what's great about having a, a state engine inside your game engine is that 
it allows you to separate your con uh, things by state. So for example, everything that happens on your splash screen would be in your splash screen state. Everything that happens during gameplay would be in your gameplay state. And everything that happens during your end screen uh, is in the end screen state. So it's a good way to separate your code by state. So you don't have like just one state where everything's written there and you have a 6,000 line file or something. All right, here's levels. Let me show you what a level looks like here. These ones on here are the turrets and stuff. So this shows the position of everything on the screen. And the way this works is that you have a level reader here, which will read in level1.txt and create your game objects from it. And your, this is your level events here. All right, so now we're going to our custom objects. Got our bullet sprites, chopper sprites, missile sprites, player sprites, splash image, terrain background, turret bullet sprite, and turret sprite. Let's go to player sprite and just take a look. It's got a lot of information about speed and position of the sprite and so forth, and uh, information on uh, where it is in the animation loop. And if it gets a command for like stop moving, this executes move left, move right, move up, move down. And update here. So when the update method inside of your current state is running, it will call this update for each of the different game objects. And the same with the render. It will call this uh, during its draw state to render the objects. Right here's your actual particles. This is your exhaust one. It's got a minimum, maximum lifespan, velocity, acceleration, gravity, opacity, rotation, and scale, and so forth. And the explosion one's very similar. All right, so here's your different states. Here's the dev state. What's cool about the dev state is let's say you want to try something out, but you don't want to break your code and start inside of your gameplay state while you're experimenting with it. You can create a dev state and just try it out in there. So th this one here is for handling what happens with your turret. So you can experiment with the turret in there without breaking your regular game code. Here's the main state. This is the gameplay state. Let's go over some of the methods in here. Here's the load content. There's handle input. When it gets a command from the input mapper, or, or from the input mapper, it, it will use that command like this one, game exit, uh, to execute this code, and or it might send player move left, and then this executes and so forth. And here's update game state. This is all the logic uh, that that occurs during your gameplay state is there. And here's render, which is called to show your objects. And here's your reset game functionality. Game over kill player and, and so forth and here's your splash state here show the input mapper so this keeps track of uh, it sends a command whenever you hit the escape key which is game exit uh, space which is player shoots and then right left up and down which are player move those directions and here's your splash state which is very simple And final, not finally, but close to finally, here, here's the first thing that uh, executes in your program, the program.cs. So it creates a new main game object, which takes a, is sent a width of the screen, a height of the screen that tells it to start in the splash state. Let's go to main game now. So this is the main game state. It's got an initialize here, which runs at the beginning of the program. Load content that loads uh, runs during the beginning of the program. 
And here's uh, for switching your game states. And if you need to unload content, there you go. And here's its uh, update. So this will call the current game state, uh, it, the, me the update method in the current game state, and the handle input in the current game state. And here's the draw. It calls the renders in your current game state. So how do I like this book? I like this book. I didn't learn mono game with this book though. I initially learned it by just watching YouTube videos and using the tutorials that were, that were on the mono game website. My first game, it, it turned out as designs, but the, the code wasn't that elegant and there's a lot of things I could have done better. So I went out and I bought this book, I read it, I played around with the example game in it and stuff and then I made my next game and my next game was far superior and the engine I built for it was much better, uh, much more elegant code, better separation of concerns and uh, a lot more readable. But yeah, if you're thinking about learning mono game, I definitely re recommend getting this book. You, you, you're probably still going to want to do the tutorials and stuff and maybe watch some YouTube videos. But this book is a must have. Have a good evening.